Do you know what I like to do after a long day? I like to look at some baseball cards. I want to go through and I want to talk about the different old game cards that they had for baseball over the years, starting with the very first ones up until about uh, 1937. I think I'll finish it 1937. It's going to be a longer video than I usually make. I wanted to show all of my game cards from all of those sets, some of which are pretty rare. You know, there have been lots of games made with baseball cards over the years. Most of us will know about the 1968 Tops game. We'll know about the 1970 and 71 Scratch Off game. There's many, 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 many other games. There was the uh, Milton Bradley and they made uh, this particular style for three years. They, two of the years were, they look identical. And uh, one year, they look a little different. Uh, this was a board game. And I still have all the cards in there. And of course, in 1968, they made the... Uh, the board game with the regular looking 1968 uh, cards. And of course, they've made these kinds of sets in uh, in pretty much all the sports uh, over the years. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to go back to the beginning. You know, I want to I want to take a look at all the original game cards uh, from way back and show you all of the cards that I have. Now, long before there was Pokemon or Magic the Gathering, or any of those kinds of card games, the very first card game was with baseball that I'm aware of in 1884. And that was Lawson's game. And they look like this. And they had two different color backs. They had the blue there. And then they had the, uh, they're more scarce, but I'm not so sure how more scarce. They, the maroon bags. And the cards look like this. They were a game card, no specific players on them. So those were from 1884. Then in 1888, they issued the first game cards with players on them. And this is Ezra Sutton. Of course, he hit the very first home run in Major League Baseball history. And they had a little playing card up in the corner. And these came in a box set. There's a really nice Connie Mack in this set. I wouldn't mind getting. So... That was the first game card that featured an actual, you know, actual individual players. And then in 1904, they came out with the first set of fan craze cards. And this is the instruction. I've got the instructions for them. You know, I want to have a card museum someday. That's my goal. And so I acquire these kinds of pieces. And many times you can get these for next to nothing. And this is the actual board game. And they had little pegs here. And you could put them around the bases. And I think these are missing some pegs. So down here um, is the, uh, the runs. And up here they kept the balls and strikes. So this was the board. This was the instructions. And these cards were more generic. Um, this is, uh, oh, what is this? I don't even know. This is what came with it. And these were out of Cincinnati. So that was like a cover card. And this is what they looked like. And they also have uh, cards with sayings. Like, it'll talk about, there's one that talks about Christy Mathewson, one that's uh, Hannes Wagner. It doesn't have an image, it just has a statement on them. So that was the first fan craze in 1904, 
And then, of course, in 1906, they issued cards with individual players. Another another card set. And here's the uh, Jack Chesbro. That's what these look like. Of course, the Hannes Wagner in this is really a dream card of mine. And a few years ago, I, I could have picked it up. It was, uh, you know, these game cards were a little under the radar. They're from 1906. So, you know, they're older than most baseball cards we all have in our collections. And they have some of the top players of that time. Deacon Philippe. And you can see that it's easy to find these in high grade. Uh, Jake Beckley. Good, good ball player you don't hear a whole lot about. Here's Red Ames. This was the very first one I ever got. I was so excited to get this because it was from 1906. I had no idea what it was, but it was many, 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 a few decades ago now. And I got this Richie, this uh, Claude Richie, played for my Pirates. So we're up to 1906. Now, these are the cards that I have, that I know of. Uh, it's very possible there are some other ones uh, that I'm not aware of. And if you know of any, you feel free to share them with me. Always learning in this hobby, always learning. There's... Just an infinite amount of uh, vintage cards to discover. Uh, so here we have the 1913 Knapp Lajewey game. And those came in two different colors. And he was the only player. Uh, but a great Lajewey card to pick up for the budget minded collector. And I mean, <laughs> it's a great image of him. Ty Cobb said he was the best line hitter he ever saw. And Babe Ruth was the best power hitter he ever saw. So we had those. Then, in 1914, we had the polo ground game. And here's the Hannes Wagner. Here's the Trish Speaker. Here's the uh, Eddie Collins. And we have Stuffy McGinnis here. First baseman on the $100,000 infield. And of course, you know, these, these cards here, you could pick up for, you know, a fraction of... Uh, of some of their other playing day cards, they have come up recently. But if you're new to vintage, want to start vintage, uh, these are these are a nice uh, these are nice cards to start with, in my opinion. Now we'll move on to the 1913 um, National game, and these are some nice cards too. Here's the Shoeless Joe Jackson. This card is amazing. It's, man, it just looks so undergraded. I remember when I bought it from the seller, I was asking all kinds of questions and he was like, I have no idea. It's because I was looking at like sixes and sevens. It didn't look as good as this one. Uh, so I pulled the trigger. I'm glad I did. It's really shot up in value. And I just showed the Ty Cobb. And here's Home Run Baker. It's a great looking card. And here's Zach Wheat. I got to get it out of this PSA sleeve. Rube Marquard. This is such a beautiful card. This is Miller Huggins. Here's Cy Young. And here's Chief Bender. Then we have, uh, this is from 1923, the Walter Mails game. 
And these cards are rare. Uh, they're very rare. And the uh, Walter Johnson's probably the one, the main one to get. I'd love to have that one. Uh, so here's the Rabbit Moranville. And this is what they look like on the back. You can still find the boxes for these around. Not in too good a shape from what I've seen, but they're still out there. I have a few of these. I love this image because there were two George Burns. One was a base dealer, and that's him. I love that he's stealing a base there. And Howard Emke, the star of the 1929 World Series. Again, that's what they look like on the back. Now we get into different cards from the 20s. They had different cutout cards that were made to look like playing cards. Uh, I know there was the Rittenhouse ones. Some of them are a little bit more you know, obscure, more rare uh, than others. Um, this is the... Um, I always forget the numbers, you know, off the top of my head. I can't always remember them. Let me get a nice uh, label here. 1927s. So you have uh, Babe Ruth there, and he's a joker. And you have um, Jimmy Fox is the other joker. And uh, Lou Gehrig, three of clubs. These came in different shades, uh, mostly like a reddish, and these black and white here is a Lefty Grove. I have a Dazzy Vance. And a Cy Williams. Cy Williams was the, you know, it's amazing to me. Baseball fans don't know him. He was the Babe Ruth of the National League back then. Led the National League in home runs four times. And is one of only three players born before 1900 to amass 200 or more home runs. And the other two are Rogers Hornsby and Babe Ruth. I believe he was a very good defensive outfielder too. So you have those kinds of cards in the 20s. Um, those, uh, you know, strip card kind of things. And then you have, uh, you have these. And, man, I have another one coming. I have, uh, and these are, these are pretty low pop. Uh, but I just picked up a, a John McGraw, and I don't have it yet. But these are the 1920, uh, 1931 W502s. W502s. And uh, they look a lot like the um, Yingling's ice cream, Harrington's ice cream, um, Tharp's ice cream, uh, similar to those kinds of cards. Uh, here's the Rogers Hornsby. And they had like one bagger on the back. And I have no idea how you played with these. I assume you flipped them over and you could move around the board until you got three outs. That seems to make sense. But a beautiful Rogers Hornsby. A beautiful Tony Lazeri here. Uh, one of the rare, uh, not rare, but um, Hack Wilson doesn't have a whole lot of cards. But he does in this set. And Little Poison, Lloyd Wainer. And when you talk about the old vintage game cards, people don't talk about the 1936 Gowdy. But this had a game on the back. Here's the Hank Greenberg. The very first one I ever picked up, a little rough, Paul Wainer. When I was young, I couldn't believe I got my hands on a Paul Wainer. Growing up in Pittsburgh, you know, he has the highest batting average in the history of the Pirates, even higher than Hannes Wagner. Rick Farrell. Who is this? This is Paul. Um... Oh, this is Bill Weber. Bill Weber. <laughs> Pepper Martin. Man. Just a great image of Pepper there. He had some interesting teeth. A lot of people did back then. Uh, Jimmy Dykes. Wally Berger. Let's 
So those are in 36. Then we also have another game in 36, and that's the S&S game cards. And man, these are, uh, this was a great way to collect some great Hall of Famers. The S&S game cards. Here's Jimmy Fox. Melot. Paul Wainer again. Archie Vaughn. This is what they look like on the back. Dolph Camilli. I have some instruction cards here. And I'll tell you what, we just grade everything these days. There's a graded instruction card. <laughs> This one's blank on the back. Uh, here we have Chuck Klein. Great player. Again, you can find these in higher grade very easily. And you don't have to pay up for higher grades in these cards like you, you would normal, normal baseball cards. Uh, the game cards... You know, because they're more readily available in higher grade, they don't command the same kind of dispersion in price that uh, some of the other issues do. Frankie Frisch. Billy Herman, and he doesn't have a whole lot of baseball cards either. So it's nice that he's in this set. Kiki Kyler. Joe Cronin. This is Stan Hack. Phil Cavaretta. And here's Charlie Grimm. I need the pie trainer in here and the little poison. Been meaning to grab those. But I got some good ones there. And then in 1937, and this is the year I'm going to end, they had the Ducky Medwick. And this is a hard to find obscure card. But he had apparently his own his own box of playing cards. Game cards, I should say. So that's where I'm gonna end. Whew, I got a lot of cards out on the table. How great is this board game? Fan Craze, 1904. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Uh, by the way, I'm wearing my vintage Chicago Cubs hat this time. You know, in honor of the old, the old days, the old days of baseball. Hey, guys, that's what I have for you. I hope you enjoyed. If you know of other vintage game cards I may have missed, leave it in the comments. Let's get a discussion going. I love learning about new things. That's part of the the joy of YouTube is us all sharing what we know. And I learn, man, I learn as much from the comments as I do from watching videos. So I thank you for that. Thanks for watching.